When I first saw Drumby, I said, this is the app of the year. And I don't say that lightly. I've never said it on the show in 2011. But when I saw how it's going to change the way I do phone calls with people, I said, this is it. And uh, we're going to see it right now. Drumby. <laughs> Who are you? My name is Shervin Talia. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Drumby, and uh, I'm a reformed consultant. I was in uh, management consulting for many, many years, and before that I did a startup in my 20s. So I got the bug to do it again, and uh, here I am. Very cool. When I saw your app, I immediately said, this is app of the year. It's, uh, and I don't say that for every kind of app, because um, I see this as strategic. Maybe you won't succeed and get everybody in the world on it, like Facebook or something, but uh, you totally changed what I thought of, uh, uh, what, what a phone could be, right? So tell me a little bit about what you're trying to do. I, I appreciate that. I think that uh, when you look at how people are communicating today, uh, they've added a series of tools and asynchronous forms of communications to what they do that's very natural to them. Uh, the volume of phone calls has not dropped off the cliff. It's just that it's been augmented with text messaging, with tweeting, with Facebook, checking in, a number of different things. So in effect, what we do is we text people and say, when can you talk? Or we uh, you know, post something on Facebook and Twitter, and then that creates a conversation. I didn't know you were in town. I had no idea uh, you know, you'd gone on a trip to Paris, whatever it may be. But what you and I are doing right now is natural to us. We're talking. We didn't have to be taught how to do this, and this is the most social form of communications there is. So we watched how people were communicating, and we thought, let's make it better, but let's keep it in a very natural order. So your frustration when your phone rings is that yeah. if you're lucky, you know who's calling you. What you don't know is why they're calling, what they want to talk about, if it's urgent, or where they are. Yeah. And you keep pointing out that the, the phone ha interface hasn't changed for 40 years. For really. 40 I mean, plus years. We have years. a dial pad. Right. So the 0 through 9 um, convention for uh, a dial pad has many limitations for the end user. The first is that it's static. It's just staring at you. It doesn't tell you, for example, uh, what the other person, when your phone is about to ring, wants to talk about. The, the dialer also it requires for you to do a bunch of data entry, right? Which is prone to having errors. It's prone to uh, other forms of downstream issues as well. Lastly, the issue with the dialer is that unlike everything else that's on your smartphone, it's not smart. Explain so, what you mean by that. Right. So it's not integrated with your social graph. What we're doing right now, when you're having a phone call with someone, there is absolutely no way of connecting that to Facebook or Twitter or Google Plus or anything else. Whereas the rest of what we do, we check in, we take pictures through Instagram and whatnot, we actually bring that into the social graph. So what we wanted to do was rethink the dialer and the way to do that is basically to build an application uh, uh, when you're developing on the iOS, obviously there are certain conventions that you have to follow. So we build an application that we like to say it does to the dialer what Instagram did to the camera. I love Instagram and I seldom go back to the native camera because I just find that Instagram brings a beautiful social layer on top of that. Yeah. We've taken that metaphor uh, because we're such fans of Instagram and we brought that to something that people do every day on an average of five to ten times a day, which is talking on the phone. So this is an app for uh, iOS, I iPhone devices, not Android yet? And Android as well. We've Are actually, you? we're going to launch with both simultaneously. Okay. On the Android, we don't have uh, some of the restrictions, so we're free to do other things uh, with it. You can actually replace the dialer if you choose to uh, on, on the Android. Uh, but it was important for us to launch on both uh, and kind of let the market dictate. What and, and that's where I was headed. Apple has blocked apps that have messed with the dialer, right? Uh, are they going to approve your app? We think so because we're not messing with it. We're, okay. we're very cognizant of it. We've actually followed the letter of the law. One good example is that if I want to speak with you and you grant me permission, your phone shouldn't be ringing me. It should really be my phone calling you because that's the convention. So we've orchestrated that into the app, and uh, it's all done through our back-end platform. Okay. So we're not violating any of their uh, rules. In fact, we think that Apple will love what we're doing because it makes the phone, which is af it's called a phone, right? So calling is something that people are doing anyway. It just brings another level of richness to what people are doing anyway. 
What does it look like when I first open it up? What it, what's the first experience? It looks familiar to you and it looks familiar because it's pulling pictures from Facebook and it shows now, you. How did those people show up? Did you pull the names out of my, my contacts on the phone? That's or exactly you, what we're doing. Or did you pull them out of Facebook? We're pulling your contacts because the people that you talk to by and large are going to be in your contacts. They might not be. Actually, the correlation between the people that you talk to on a day-to-day -day basis versus people that you communicate on Facebook, it's not, there's not a tight correlation with that. So you actually, if you look at your favorites, the people that you talk to on a regular basis, you may not actually engage in too much Facebook or Twitter activity with them. So what we do is we just pull the people that you talk to, you pick the people that you want to uh, set up as sort of those the, the opening set of conversations, if you will, it pulls their pictures from Facebook, and then you, we, the convention is, who do you want to talk to, what do you want to say? And the what do you want to say metaphor is very similar to Twitter. So it's a short, you know, what is the topic of this conversation, or you pick from something that you've used before, and then we do two other things. You can set urgency, and you can also set your location, and yeah. we default with a location on. On the receiving end, Let's make the assumption that you don't have drumbeat. You get a text message and it says, Shervin wants to talk to you about you know, setting up dinner. Uh, this hyperlink, if you're available, this hyperlink, if you can't talk. And both of those take you to a mobile web environment. So you successfully get away from needing to uh, have me leave voicemail for you or you having to take my call when you're not available for it. Right. Now, if in fact you do have the app and through the mobile session, we do encourage you to download the app, then you get a richer experience. So the notification's a little richer and you can use a short message, I'm in a meeting, I'll call you back. Or you can say, yes, in fact, you do want to speak to me. The command comes back in my call, uh, gets initiated back to you. Very cool. The, uh, the voice call, once it gets connected, is that going through AT&T or Verizon or a, a carrier or is it going through your own voice over IP service? That's a great question too. We, uh, we had the option of going through any number of VoIP or SIP providers, but we decided uh, we wanted to give people the experience that they're very comfortable with. People, you're calling people anyway, right? And you're familiar with that level of quality that exists today. So we did, or lack thereof. Or lack thereof in some <laughs> cases, and that's fair. Uh, so we decided to go with what, what people are doing anyway. So we're using the same carriers, uh, the, the same calling metaphor, if you will, but the integration with VoIP and doing other things uh, downstream, I think that's going to be an easy thing for us to implement. So if you call me through Drumbee, it's the, your phone number still shows up in my phone dialer and my uh, rec most recent calls and stuff like that. Absolutely. And again, we're adhering to what Apple uh, asks us to do and what they don't allow us to do. The other thing I would add is that after we've had a conversation, and this is what people do, they go out on a date or they have dinner or whatever it is and then they immediately go to Facebook and Twitter whereas in fact as they're driving away they're on the phone talking to each other, can't wait till I see you again, whatever. But after that conversation uh, you can actually with one click post that to Facebook or Twitter. Uh, it's fairly simple. As painful as it is to call people because we hate leaving voicemail, we hate retrieving voicemail and Drummy fixes that, calling a company is orders of magnitude more painful. Yeah. So you have relationships with between 30 and 50 different companies from your homeowners association to the dry cleaner to your place you get your car maintained, airlines, banks, hotels, etc. You're not going to download an app for the 30 to 50 businesses that you deal with. Yeah. It's untenable. I've tried it. It's, it's falling apart. Right. right. And one of the key reasons why it falls apart is because they all behave differently. They have different forms of authentication, etc. What we do is we find the businesses that you are most connected to and when they become a part of Drumbee, they appear too as part of your the icons and it's a very visual type of metaphor. This one insurance company has a classic problem that you and I can relate to. When you call you get those menus, press 1, press 2, go through a hold for 10, 12, 15 minutes and then when an operator gets on the line, they ask you, who are you? Yeah. What's your account number? Punch it in and do all of that. With Drumbee, we eliminate all of that. The exact same metaphor of Drum being another person, your wife, your husband, whoever it may be, it's a similar interaction with the business. You visually see the call tree, they contact you, you've never had to tell them who you are, you've never been on hold, you've never had to go from one menu to another. The businesses love it, and this is why the businesses pay for it, because 
it's not an inbound 800 number, it's actually an outbound call. Yeah. You've never been on hold, never gone through the aut authentication, the fat fingering that they have to do on their side. So saves them a lot of time and money, creates a much better customer experience, they pay for it. When you're gonna make a phone call, we shouldn't try to hide the phone number. That pisses off customers. We just wanna make that phone call very efficient and delightful, and that's where we bring the asynchronous components to it. So how do you get these new companies into, because my dialer probably has my wife and, and Rocky in there and other people I call a lot. Sure. Um, how do I get company, because I don't need to call an insurance company every day, right? So I, I don't want it to be in my uh, main screen. Certainly not. So it'll be a separate screen, which is your businesses, and then we're working on a couple of other interesting ideas. A lot of relationships are just in time. You go to a hotel. Okay, there's a hotel uh, right around the corner right here too. You go into every one of the rooms, there's this phone there. You'll only use that phone for three reasons, to call to get your car, for room service, or to speak to the concierge. You're not gonna use it to make an outbound call right. at $5 per call, right? Yep. So when you walk into that hotel, that hotel's information should appear on Drumby automatically so that wherever you are, because you'll have your smartphone with you at all times, if you need to talk to the front desk, if you need to get to valet, you just get to it through Drumby. And then when you check out of the hotel, that icon should just go away dynamically yeah. as well. With respect to the more permanent types of relationship like your car, your home, etc., we use a metaphor very similar to friends. We get the feed from them, we know who their customers are, we know who's on the Drumby network. We say, oh, it looks like your insurance company is so-and-so or your doctor is so-and-so. Would you like them added to this business tab? So you can pick that up off of Facebook if I've liked that insurance company or off of Google Plus if I've plus one. We can do it that way, which is basically you showing the intent. The other way is when they tell us who their customer database is and we map it up against who's on Drumby, we can suggest. It's almost like so we're coming a little more proactively to it as well. There are two ways that we can do that. Very cool. Where did this idea come from? We all have these devices, and they have what we believe is undertapped computing capabilities, especially when it comes to voice. With everything else, we're using all the, you know, the, the hardware and the software very effectively. But when it, you call a company, it goes down to the lowest common denominator, which is what they have in their environment. So we started off with a clean sheet of paper, and we said every call is going to come from a device like this at some point. Yep. Cloud computing is going to be pervasive. And our third hypothesis was that this idea of Facebook and Twitter and whatnot wasn't just going to be a fad. Social and engagement and adding context was going to be a permanent behavior. And we thought these things would come together. Tell me about that because uh, when, when we're using Drumby together, uh, your Facebook shows up on my screen. How, right. how did that happen? So what we noticed when we talked to people is, you know, we uh, spent a lot of time in the field just communicating and researching and seeing what people are doing. People said that, you know, we asked them, what do you like about Facebook? What do you like about Twitter? What do you like about all these different things? And then we talked about calling. And what they said was that the most frustrating thing is when you move from Facebook to a phone call, it's hard to remember what was going on in that person's life. Yeah. Because Facebook is a constant stream, and I think you've posted eloquently about this the issue of noise, if you will, in these, in, in, uh, throughout all the different networks to various extents. When I'm going to speak with you, it's at that point that I want to know what's going on in your life, yeah. right? So what we do is we just pull the latest uh, post from Facebook, and that's the one that we're going to market with initially, so that I have some more context about the discussion. So I can ask you how your trip was, or your kid's birthday, or whatever maybe that you care to share. Very cool. Um, tell me a little bit about the fund fundamentals behind the company. How is it funded? We did uh, we self-funded it last year. We had some friends and family that believed in us, and they uh, they loaned us some money too. And then earlier this year, we took in a little bit of uh, angel money again from friends and family and a couple of customers. Yeah. Is there any competition for this? Have you seen anybody try to do this in the marketplace? There are a number of companies that are trying to address the ills of the phone and of calling. And every one of us is coming at it a little bit differently. While no one is doing exactly what we're doing, um, I, it's encouraging to see that uh, I think a lot of people are, are curious about how to make calling more social and a little bit smarter because everything else on the phone is very smart. Yeah, I've seen uh, one company in Israel that's sort of coming at you but from a different angle. Um, where do you think this is going to go? I mean, and are you going to sell to Google and Apple or, uh, or Apple or Microsoft? You know, because they're all trying to come up with an idea that's going to make their product stand out from, uh, you know, the competitors. Um, it, seems, it seems so obvious that the phone <laughs> is one place they should innovate, right? Right. 
You know, there, there are more orders placed on the phone every day than through e-commerce. It's hard to imagine that because we live in uh, California. When you're in the coasts, on the edges, you think, oh, everyone's online. No. People are still going to the phone when they need support, when they need to buy something, right? Our, my long-term vision is for Drumby to be a, a sort of an enabler of every type of phone communication, whether it's person to person or person to business. Um, now, with respect to the other uh, topic that you brought up, uh, we haven't had any uh, discussions yet, and if that happens, we'll we'll take the conversations. But we're we're trying to build a business right now. Very cool. Are you, because you're using a little bit of location? Are you hooking up to things like Foursquare and showing me another tab that could be just phone numbers near you that you might want? You know, like the the restaurants within walking distance, the gym, whatever. That's a great idea. We've done some experiments. For the first release, I think you know this better than anyone else, most of these apps, when they come out, they don't fail because of a lack of functionality. Most of them fail because there's too much functionality. Yeah. We're adding something a little bit new, essentially context to the call. We just want to sort of get this out there and get people up and running with it. We have another, a number of other interesting APIs that we're working with. Simple Geo does a great job, you know, both in terms of the um, the, the locations, I talked about the dynamic nature of that relationship. You brought up something very interesting as well, and I'll make a mental note of that so that we can run some experiments with that as well. There's some other interesting things that you can do with hashtags as well. So if my conversation with you uh, is going to be about setting up lunch and having sushi, while we're talking, we can look down at the phone and we can see a number of recommendations because I'm now expressing intent vis-a-vis -vis the hashtag, right? So again, I, I think there are a number of interesting experiments that we can oh, run. That's insane. So are you looking at, at hooking up to food spotting and maybe put, putting some pictures there or something? I'm like a that? big fan of food spotting, uh, both in terms of a, being a consumer and just I love the community that they're building as well. They could be an excellent partner to, uh, to connect to. Um, again, it's, it's still fairly early. We're just trying to ship the product right now. Well, this gets back to where I started. The fact that you showed me this gets me thinking that the phone isn't done. And it, it, there's all this innovation that uh, a company like yours could do using all these services that have grown up over the last three or four years, right? Which is beautiful because we don't want to invent those other services. Great communities, great APIs, great uh, companies exist right now, yet they end at the edge, and the edge is that voice call. Yeah. Everything that we do when we go online and we do a search, when we check in, we get recommendations, we get social feedback, all those things, except for when we're on the phone. Again, it goes down to the lowest common denominator. And I'll give you a very different use case right now. When you call a company for support, there's a very good chance that someone before you had the exact same question. And the fact that they called an hour before you, they uh, were able to get their issue resolved. Because of the way that the traditional phone system is set up, the moment you pick up the phone, you're in a tunnel. Yeah. And your request is now in a hardened queue. Another employee, Another customer, a member of that community, has no way of knowing that Robert has this question and being able to help you. We actually federate that because we know the context of what you want. While you're waiting for the callback to happen, it says, Sally had the exact same question. She found this answer to be helpful. Or so-and-so knows that or would like to speak to you or give, provide some content. So this idea is essentially taking that context and abstracting it from the actual intent of making a call and bringing some other riches to it. Very cool. Where do I learn more about this? Drumby.com. We have some limited information. A few it's spelled unique, on. uniquely, right? So Yeah, it's D-R-U-M, B as in boy, I. So yep. there's an I at the end, drumby.com. Thank you so much for, uh, I, I think you were, you, I was the one, first one to see it outside your you're the You're the first person to see it, and uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I did it with some intrepidation, and uh, your feedback was very encouraging. Thank you for that. Very cool. Well, thank you, and uh, it is so far the app of the year, so if there's another one out there, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah.